we will be covering two LOS combined that is asset allocation and the principle of portfolio construction okay so we have uh, tried to cover uh, some little bit over here okay that is in asset allocation we will be creating a strategic asset allocation for the client we will say that okay for the client considering all the return objective risk objective the constraint the uh, risk that the client wants to take I have come up with a certain strategic asset allocation for the client I have created debt to be 40 I have created equity to be 60 so this is the strategic asset allocation for the client and we will ensure that we will be uh, having investments okay, in this okay however we have seen that there can be deviation okay and what we say is whatever the deviation comes because of the different returns in allocation we will be removing that by rebalancing the portfolio so whenever there is a deviation so we have a rebalancing pol policy and as per this policy we will ensure that the portfolio is rebalanced to this strategic asset allocation level okay now there are two things in asset allocation one is strategic asset allocation another thing you have is tactical asset allocation now in, in do you ha uh, have an understanding of what is tactical asset allocation okay so think about strategic asset allocation takes longer term into consideration so maybe like uh, if your investor has come so you will take into consideration his long term goals okay you will uh, take into consideration his long term liquidity needs okay and then you will create this strategic asset allocation however you will also specify in the port uh, in the IPS that this is my strategic asset allocation but in certain situation depending on the expectation of the market or market expectation the fund manager can change the allocation in the portfolio the fund manager can change this allocation and what you are saying is that is tactical asset allocation so what we say is like if the asset manager thinks that the equity market is overvalued okay the equity can be brought down to 20% of the total portfolio okay but it will not be less than 20% we can bring down to 20% of the portfolio okay and debt can be can go as high as 80% of the portfolio depending on the market situation okay this can here just have given 20% okay it can be 0% also so depending on the market situation we can bring down to 0% and this we can bring up to 100% so tactical asset allocation considers the short term expectation of the market the strategic asset allocation considers the long term market expectation the risk objective return objective the constraints it also consider the type of risk that the comp the risk tolerance of the client okay however the tactical asset allocation is kind of a technical decision it is a short term decision in the short term you will deviate from the strategic asset allocation okay depending on the expectation that you have in the market okay so tactical asset allocation also you will have to specify what is the allocation in case when you have certain changes so you will specify that okay the tactical asset allocation we we can move this way okay next is your security selection okay so when we are constructing a portfolio okay so what is happening is when you are constructing a portfolio if you okay. yes yes you have to mention all of these things in the policy okay in fact tactical asset allocation should be mentioned in the policy okay now think about what we are uh, trying to cover is security selection over here so when you are considering the portfolio of the client okay so what you have is the portfolio and you have debt you have equity now when you are investing in the equity what you have is you have various approaches one is top down approach okay and another is bottom up approach okay we are uh, we'll cover all of this in equity but let's say you are trying to cover top down approach that means you will see the situation of the economy and according to the economy situation you will uh, say that okay which are the sectors which are doing good so you will have sector 1 you will have sector 2 let's say you have the sector IT sector you think that real estate will do well okay you will think that the bank will do well so what you have is you will have depending on the market expectation you will create the various sectors in which you will be allocating your portfolio so you have 60% in equity you will say that okay I will invest 20% in IT I will invest 30% in real estate 
I will invest 50% in bank. Okay. Now, because you are thinking that these three sectors will outperform other sectors. Okay. Now, once you have uh, identified the sectors, what you have to do is you have to now find out which securities are good in this sector. So, you will say that, okay, in IT, I will be investing in TCS stock. In IT, I have good stock as Wipro. So, and I have good stock as, let's say, HCL. Okay. So, we will be investing in these three stocks and out of this whatever 100% of the IT allocation, I will invest 30% in WIP TCS, I will invest 20% in Wipro and I will invest 50% in HCL. Okay. So, this is what you have. So, how you will determine this whether to invest in TCS or not. So, you will see the performance of TCS. You will have, you will build the expectation of TCS as to how the TCS stock would be doing in near future um, and then you will be allocating the TCS stock to the client's portfolio. So, what you have is you have portfolio, okay, then you have in portfolio the asset class. In the asset class, you can have the sectors. In the sectors, you ultimately come down to the securities that you will be investing. So, same way will happen in debt. So, in the debt, you can have, okay, I will be investing in government bond, I will be investing in corporate bond and let's like say in government bond, okay, what are the type of government bonds are there? I want to invest in long term bond, I want to invest in short term bond, you will allocate accordingly. So, what we have is once you have determined the allocation, okay, next task is to come up with the capital market expectation and arrive at the security selection. Okay. At, because ultimately you have to invest, right? So, you have to invest in this stock. So, you will have to arrive at which stock you will be investing. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay. So, that is what it meant. So, what we are having is, so you have asset allocation. Once you have allocated the asset, you will be investing in the security. So, you will be doing security selection. Okay. Now, what we have is, you have what is the importance of asset allocation so if you see like from the starting i am like kind of uh, focusing on asset allocation asset allocation okay remember that uh, statistically or historically it has been seen that asset allocation okay if it is being done properly okay it is capable of explaining a high percentage of the return of the portfolio so what we see is if the strategic asset allocation is done properly the asset allocation determines 90% of the portfolio return. Okay. So, strategic asset allocation determines 90% of the return of the portfolio. Okay. And also what they say is that the market timing, okay, the timing like many people will say that okay, buy now, sell tomorrow, buy tomorrow, sell day after. Okay. What has been seen that market timing doesn't make a lot of difference. So, 90% of the return of the portfolio, portfolio return is being determined by strategic asset allocation. Market timing does, is not that important. Okay. Okay. What we see is, as a result, what I, we also see is that asset selection is more important than security selection. So, if you have identified the asset properly, so if you have said that, okay, based on this guy's requirement, I have 40 uh, uh, debt, 60 equity, okay. It, this is much more important than what you are getting at the end because what happens is this is a larger chunk okay and let's say you have done some mistake and misappropriately you have allocated in TCS okay so you will have like stocks like TCS you will have 20 30 stocks in the portfolio okay the impact of TCS would be very less okay the idea is to diversify across the equities right across the security so what you see is that this allocation in is a major major item okay as compared to the security selection okay so what we say is allocation explain 90 percent of the return produced by the portfolio timing does not make much difference asset selection is more important than security selection that means how much you will uh, be investing in equities how much you will be investing in debt okay so i have couple of question one question from mr gulati is that what is a bottom up approach okay again we will see this uh, later in equities but in bottom up approach what you will do is you will directly uh, uh, do analysis on uh, uh, your uh, securities let's say you have uh, you will directly analyze okay what how the tcs fundamental looks like how scl fundamental looks like how sbi fundamental looks like okay so you will be seeing uh, this company's 
balance sheet, profit and loss. Okay, and then okay, you will see. Okay, I have. I think TCS looks good to me. Okay, now you will say. Okay, TCS looks good. Now, what is the perspective of the IT sector? Okay, so with the with is the perspective of IT sector good or bad? So accordingly, you will take a decision to invest in TCS. So this type of uh, investment is typically done through. You will, will create certain filters. So you will say, okay, I will filter down on the basis of P ratio, PV ratio, growth rate. All of these various parameters, you will be selecting the stocks based on that, and also you will be finding out the value. So all of that we will be learning in the equity part, which is your session number thirteen and fourteen. In fact, like in fourteen, we will learn all of these things. Okay. Then I have one more question. Okay. The okay. So Aditya says that ninety percent of the actual return. So SA has been capable of explaining ninety percent of the actual return. So it has been historically seen across the clients. It has been seen that SA determines the return. Okay, so that is why whenever you are creating your own portfolio, your client's portfolio, try to focus on the asset allocation. Okay, so for asset allocation, it is very important to understand the return, risk objective. Okay, have a like a, a compatibility between this. Understand the risk tolerance. Understand the constraint. And then come up with the asset allocation. If the asset allocation is done fine, okay, what you will happen is even if you do mistake in security selection, okay, it will not impact much. Okay, so that is why many people say that we should invest passively. So idea is to uh, get equities. Okay, let's say you have got forty percent debt, sixty percent equity. What they say is like invest entire sixty percent equity in passive uh, funds. Okay, so because What they are saying, security selection will not matter much. Okay, so if you are investing in uh, passive funds, your cost is lesser. Okay, your returns are, are roughly the market return. As a result, okay, your portfolio will do well. Okay, so this was the topic that we had to cover.